And hello, welcome back to Wolverine Baptist Church. So glad you're tuning in and joining us. Uh, be praying for Wolverine Baptist Church. Uh, we have been away from together from uh, doing this on Wednesday nights for eight weeks now. And I don't know about you, I'm getting sick of it. Um, I just need to have uh, some, I'm counseling with some of the men of the church, getting some wisdom together um, before we further open things up. But uh, just want to be wise about it, folks, trying to keep everybody safe. But be praying for uh, your pastor as he seeks the wisdom of God concerning that. 377 we're going to sing together. 377 is Rescue the Perishing. Now sing at home. Don't just endure my singing. Sing at home. Here we go. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, cast them in pity from sin and the grave. We pour the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Weep with them earnestly, weep with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save on that last. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow ways, patiently win them. Tell the poor wonder the Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for that truth that uh, you do save the lost, that you save the sinner, that you saved me. And Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, as we get into this lesson time now, Lord, help it not just be another routine. Uh, Lord, help us really seek the truth of the Word of God. We ask in Jesus' name and amen. We're getting to the fun subjects now. In our uh, lesson, uh, we've gone through uh, lots of things, separation and uh, uh, eternal security and how I know I'm saved and uh, baptism. Today, we are going right for your wallet. At least that's what Satan wants you to believe. Uh, Satan, one of the lies of Satan is the preacher only ever talks about money. I try not to, folks. I try to balance it, but we uh, do believe in giving. Letter L in our Constitution and bylaws, uh, we believe that every Christian, as a steward uh, of wealth uh, entrusted to him, is obligated to support his local church, yes, financially. Uh, we believe that God has established a tithe, 10% as a basis for giving, but that every Christian should also give offerings, uh, other offerings sacrificially and cheerfully to the support of the church, uh, the relief of those in need, and the spread of the gospel. We believe that a Christian re, uh, relinquishes all rights to, do, to direct the use of the tithe or offering once the gift has been made. So we're getting into that. Uh, I'm going to very quickly cover the last part as you're trying to find the book of Malachi, uh, Malachi chapter number three in your scriptures, trying to find it there myself. There we go. Last book of the Old Testament should be easy to find, right? Malachi chapter number three. And we do believe that uh, and support that last part here. Once I give my money, once you give your money to the church, it can be suggested to go to certain areas. Hey, I want to give $1,000 for lawn mowing or whatever. And uh, we could highly suggest, uh, take your suggestion and uh, pray over that. But uh, 
Uh, once it's in the coffers of the church, it's going to be used for the furtherance of the things of the church. And uh, if we don't need to necessarily use that money in that area, we'll move it to an area that we you, uh, do need at the time. And uh, that done very, very prayerfully, of course. But Malachi, now that you have found it and that I've found it, uh, Malachi chapter number 3, verse number 8. Malachi 3 8 ask a question right uh, that hits most people right between the eyes at times. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Your curse with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation be bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there be me. There may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And uh, we're going to uh, look into that today. The uh, picture is we see a problem. The problem was tithing. Uh, they didn't want to, as it's, we're going to see. It's a command uh, throughout the scripture. Uh, from the beginning of time, as God uh, started allowing man to be prosperous in the field, prosperous in the uh, things he was doing, the first 10% of anything that was increased had to go to uh, the storehouses of the uh, tabernacle by uh, by then, the temple back then. Uh, today, the church, that first 10% goes there. But obvi obviously here, Malachi was dealing with a situation and uh, people weren't giving that. And I remember a preacher uh, from Indiana. Uh, I won't say his name here, uh, but a uh, Baptist preacher friend of mine in Indiana uh, when he preached this in a church I was in, he literally took a baseball bat and uh, beat up the front pew with a baseball bat. And he, everybody was freaking out. He said, that is the um, thought and the intent of the words here. Uh, when you're not giving your 10% to the Lord, when you get paid any amount of money and you do not give that 10% of the Lord, the Bible says you're a thief. The Bible says you're a robber. It's like you took God into the back, uh, back alley and beat him up and shook him down uh, for his money. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 from our uh, statement of faith. Uh, and uh, if you have one of those statements of faith I've ever sent to you, you can find this verse reference right there. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's the first fruit principle. Always the question is, well, pastor, should I tithe off the gross or off the net? I don't always, I, I get confused at times, which is, which, let me put it this way. doesn't matter how much the government took. The, the amount that you were paid before you had to pay the government is what you tithe off of. First fruits. It also comes to the thought of first bill, first payment, first of and anything you're doing with your money, uh, many a Christian have been uh, at least tempted, I'm sure, and I've known many have done it. Uh, well, Pastor, I just couldn't afford it. I, I paid my light bill, my electric bill, my phone bill, my cable bill, my, my this, my this, my this, and by the time I got to the end of paying all those bills, couldn't tithe. Nope. God says, tithe. God says, give that the first fruit. We need to be people of God 
that work hard and try to provide that we can uh, for our needs and for those needs of others, others is sometimes the problem. You don't have any money after the tithe. You don't have much money after the tithe, possibly because you're not working a, a job as faithfully as God would want you to work it. Now I, I realize this may be coming across as strong teaching and preaching, especially for a Wednesday night especially in the economy where everything's got to shut down. But uh, when the economy comes back and the jobs start opening back up, you be faithful to going to work, especially men, each and every day. And if you don't have money after the tithe, you need to get rid of some bills in your life. You don't have to have the, uh, all of those bills. There's certainly some you can get rid of and, and free uh, your money up. It's also... Secondly, and maybe more pleasantly, sometimes it's an opportunity for us to prove God. It says, and see, if I do not open the windows of heaven and, and pour ye out a blessing, God, here's my tithe. I don't know how I'm going to survive uh, with that amount of money out of my paycheck, but uh, God, here it is. Here's my 10%. Please to do it. Now I'm going to watch you provide. Tell you what. Uh, my family could sit down across the uh, coffee table with you and tell you story after story after story of God providing for our family uh, because we put him first, because we did tithe, because we gave to him. It's foolish to think God isn't aware of what I owe him. Why do I say that? I am not going to likely ever be the pastor and some do i've known some that do especially for their staff that uh look at their salary and then look at their giving records especially like me if i'm on salary from the church uh, uh go back later and say pastor or the pastor to a, a youth pastor, I've noticed you're only at 9.5%. You've got 5%, 0.5% to make up. You're, you're behind on your ties. No, I'm not going to be that, pa that type of pastor. Why? Because God's a whole lot bigger than I am. God's a whole lot bigger than I am, and tithing is, ser is a serious matter, and you should do it because you want this before God. Uh, and consider the thought in Acts chapter number five going with tithing going with extra giving Acts chapter number five verse number one but a certain man named Ananias with his uh, Sapphira his wife sold in a possession verse number two begins to tell you the story and kept back part of the price wife being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet and you know the story through the end. By the end of this story, they're both laying side by side in fresh new dug graves, down, stone cold dead. Because here's what they did. They said, yep, I sold my property. And in a sense, they were saying, well, you got to understand, this economy's got everything shaken up. I, I was, thought I was going to get this amount, and I told you guys I was going to get uh, this amount, but that didn't gave me a little bit less so yep here's my 10 percent. god said dead dead and uh what they should have done is saying hey i sold it god bless here's my 10 percent or with the basis the offering hey just be honest i i sold it and i'm i'm a liar I don't have to give anything. I don't want to give you as much as I gave you. Might have been even in a better light. But they perceived as a proper gift to the Lord. They lied about the Amaya and they were dead. Have you ever considered that if you willingly gave God what it is, he may allow you to have more? I'm not saying bargain with God, but what if he will honor you with giving you more because you're giving out of a pure heart. I can tame you uh, one pastor with this principle, one man of God, but this principle always comes to mind. My pastor's dad, my pastor got saved in Ohio's dad says it's crazy. The amount of money that's gone through his hands because he 
just gives it out. He's, he lives a comfortable life, comfortable job, but they said he's probably given countless amounts of dollars uh, through his fingers because he gets it, and as soon as he gets a little bit ahead, he realizes, hey, God must need this money somewhere. We see the pattern for tithing. It says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that uh, the matter of tithing is ordained of God. It's not a Baptist thing. Well, Baptist, I know you're a Baptist pastor. You're going to preach on tithing. And I, I know the church, and that's not necessarily the attitude, but there may be some uh, that get a hold of this video, uh, this YouTube video at a later date, and realize and start saying, well, of course he's preaching on tithing. He's a Baptist. No, I'm preaching it because it's Bible. I'm preaching it because it's Scripture. Consider Genesis 14. I've got this print, uh, written down, but pause this. Maybe find it. Genesis 14, verse 19 says, We, uh, we find Abraham giving uh, tithes. And, then, and he blessed them and, and said, Blessed be Abraham, the most high God, uh, pro, uh, possessor of heaven and earth, and in and bless the Most High God, which he delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave tithes of all. Jacob in Scripture gave 10%. Moses and Leviticus gave 10%. Jesus, and even Matthew 23 and verse 23. Uh, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, he says. You pay tithes of mint and of anise and of cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of we all, of, of the law of judgment, of mercy, and of faith. These uh, you have done, and not to leave the other, it says, undone. Well, the Bible never talks about tithing in the New Testament. Matthew 23, verse 23, he said, you're tithing, tithing off of these minute stuff, this mint. This, these were uh, spices, and they were getting, getting down to measuring the granules of spices to make sure it was exactly 10%, and they were very detailed in that, but the weightier matters of faith and, and trust in the Lord. They were giving it, it away. Even uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians 1, it says, uh, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay in store as God hath prospered him. That there may no tithings when I come. Tithing is con continual. They were commanded to tithe on the first day of the week. It's the Lord's day. It should be considered the con conviction of every Christian to give continually and consistently. When we don't, we're not obeying God. We don't pay the power bill of mortgage only when we choose. God deserves the best. Now, but pastor, my situation, let me understand. I understand that maybe some of you might be on a salary-based system of payment either through retirement or your uh, agreed upon terms at your job pastor i get paid to the first of every month does that mean i'm only faithful to god one day out of the month no what it does mean whenever you get money that is increased in your house give accordingly if it's once a month give it once a month if you get a birthday, if, a, if you, get, I mean, sell some property in between that month, sell a TV, sell a bicycle, and, and uh, make 10 bucks, you owe an extra dollar in between those weeks to the Lord as well. Tithing is universal. It's called, uh, tithing is to everyone. Tithing isn't just for a pastor, deacons, or church officers. We're all included. It, we should encourage, encourage even our children uh, to the tithe the wages of maybe summer jobs. Uh, we need to instill their responsibility to God. My kid comes over. You hire one of my kids to your house. Hey, so-and-so, won't you come over and, and help me clean the chicken house out or help me pull my tomatoes. I'll pay you $10 if you do that. Best know, best understand. My kids do understand. If they get paid from a job like that, they're tithing. 
they're giving a tithe, and I expect that. When my uh, son creates something with his wood burning and he sells that, I ask him, hey, how much you make? I know, Dad, I'm going to give this amount. And often it even surprised me of giving above that, maybe even the whole amount. And I know, Dad, sold, I sold and I gave all of it to the Lord. That's perfect. It's not required. That's perfect. Tithing is universal. Tithing is provisional. We are to give according to God has proper, prospered us. Now let me understand this and teach us, and it's even what we're including in our church's doctrinal statement, 10%. That 10% principle is where you start. I'm not saying, nor am I even encouraging, like that we're doing in Matthew, to get your calculator out. Okay, I made $578.23 this week, so let's get my calculator out. 578.23 uh, times 10% is, okay, I'm going to give exactly that amount, not a penny more, not a penny less. You are being exactly obedient to the Lord. But you want to see the Lord bless you? You really want to be part of the Lord? Maybe round it up. 578. Okay, I made about 600 bucks. Let's tithe $2 more. Ooh. Now you're really getting into it. Now, but pray about it. My pastor down in Kalamazoo always used to preach. Pray about it. Include the God. Uh, include God into your tithe. Include God in your missions. Don't just see it as another bill. See it as an opportunity to serve God. Ten percent is my basis. But Lord, you really blessed me this week. And my uh, maybe my bills are lower than my expe expected. I I worked some overtime. Maybe I really got some extra money. Lord, can I give you maybe fifteen percent? 20%? And it includes uh, just the tithe, but what? maybe I can do a little bit more for missions. And, uh, and maybe I noticed this around the church. Your pastor's raising uh, money for this special thing. And by the way, news break, we are. My wife reminded me, I haven't mentioned it in a while, June's coming up around the corner. Hamlin Revival's coming up the end of June. And uh, we would like to see a good offering with that. Many of you have already sacrificially given. If you've watching this and you gave and, and uh, the Lord's not pressing your heart, you don't have to feel guilty about it. But if you want to be part of the things of the Lord, we're still raising money for the hotel and food and provisions for the ha uh, Hamlin revival. And it just gets right into this. This is an opportunity to give. This is where Acts 4, 33 and 34 came into play again. Acts 5, 1, Ananias and Sapphira didn't have to give anything. I mean, besides their 10%. They sold a land, they gave it, and they were a thing, all things common in the church is what was going on. And it was expected that they were giving 100%. Hey, we're going to start selling things, we're going to start selling land, we're going to give it all to the church for the maybe brand new building. I can imagine when this building, beautiful building, a property was bought, I, I've heard uh, stories about a hey, sacrificial giving to that, people really stepping in so we can have that good building. Hey, if that's what the Lord's telling you to do, do it, but don't keep a penny for yourself is what they were doing. Hey, it was expected and, and uh, anticipated that I sold it for, and these days I sold a piece of land and got $10,000 out of it in profit. I'm going to give $10,000 to the church, but uh, maybe they said, hey, if we keep back 200 bucks, we can go down to Vivio's and Indian River and really get a good dinner together, honey, would would it really matter if we gave $10,000? let us give $9,800 to the church and said, God said, really? You're dead. The purpose of tithing. That there be meat in my house in verse 10. Why do we do it? God owns it all anyway, Pastor. If I've learned anything by being the senior pastor now these many months, couple of months, is it really does take all of us. There's nothing about our bank account over at the bank that is growing money. We might be getting a percentage, but even if we are, we're getting 
what, five bucks a month or something, depending on how the percentage is going. We're not self-generating money. We're not a business. Everything that we have in the bank account right now came from your pocket. And it came from my pocket. It's the right thing to do. That way it might be me and my house. It's an act of worship. It's actually our privilege to serve the Lord. Matthew 6, 3 says, But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing, that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. We do it to worship the Lord. It's our way of saying, Lord, you required the 10%, and I'm going to give it. I give it cheerfully. Thank you, Lord, for giving me my job. I mean, my wife and I have told testimony before. When we moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan, it was without a house. Without a job, without a plan, and within just weeks, uh, the Lord gave me a good job. So you best believe that first tithe check felt really good. Lord, I'm so glad I can give to you. I'm so glad I can provide this uh, to my local church so I can serve you that way. I wanted to give. We must give with a pure heart. Says, but so, whoso hath this world's good, First John three seventeen, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Especially as a local member of Wolverine Baptist Church. With your tithe and along with your tithe, the principle is to being aware of those around you. Same principle, same percentage at times with God. You notice, hey, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, they're working, they're trying, but they really seem to be struggling. The Lord pricks on your heart during the service, hey, give them five bucks. That would be embarrassing, though, Pastor. I, I, five bucks. If the Lord's telling you to give that person a $5 bill, give it. You don't know what that $5 bill is going to. If the Lord tells you to give more than that, give it. Well, I don't know why. You don't have to know why. Hey, the Lord's really put this on my heart. Sister, brother, here's some money. I know you deserve it. Equal responsibility of the church, the aspect of our work. Tithing is biblical method of financing God's work. Your, your tithe helps fellowship carry out the work God's call us to do. Tithes pay my salary. Yes, they do. They purchase Bibles. They support missionaries and mission opportunities. They help those in need. You may never know here on this side of heaven, how God used your tithe for the furtherance of the kingdom. Easy for you to say. It's an aspect of witness as well. Tithing helps to develop a sense of responsibility on God. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, But this I say, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, here it is, according to as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you and may all, ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work we see a, a joyfulness a, a an aspect of our witness what's your family think man it bugged my family at first i remember my family going nuts over tithing one specific time and it was what the lord told me to do at the time i graduated high school at my high school graduation they knew I, my family knew i was going off to college and really got generous with uh, their financial um, gifts uh, to the uh, to me so I could go to college and I added it all up and at that time I said hey it's an increase I got money 
So I gave some money to uh, the church, 10% of the church. And I went to Walmart, buy some um, bedding and some things I did to college and uh, needed for college. And dad came up to me and said, hey, how much money you got left? And he started doing the math. And he said, well, where'd the rest of it go? And I said, I gave it to the church. Oh, was he mad? But it was right. I felt it was the right thing to do. The promise of tithing says that you may find meat in my house and prove me now therewith, saith the Lord of hosts. God promises based on obedience. He loves that cheerful giver. Got to give 10%. And man, that number is huge. Some of that joy might be, hey, man, God's really blessed me, Pastor. I, uh, I, I got that raise at work. I, I worked hard. I was faithful. And my work paid off, as it will. I, uh, I'm living in a better house now. I, I'm living in this. I'm living at that. Look how God's blessed me. But on the other hand, I've seen the poorest of the poor thinking of one lady I, I used to pick up on the bus and when I first started my ministry in Delaware. She got real sick the one day and her, her house is on, upon the bus route. I was in charge of driving and picking up and, and uh, Miss Rosa calls me and says, Hey, Pastor, I am very sick. Not coming. I have the flu. You don't want it. But I left my missions and tithe offering on the door. And, uh, folks, it wasn't much. It wasn't much at all. Her situation, it might have been $2 adult. And she was so happy. She's like, yeah, Pastor, I don't have much. I don't, uh, some of the situations in life she was facing, and I knew it. She said, Pastor, but I don't know how the Lord is going to provide it. I promised the Lord I'd give 50 cents each and every week. And I mean, she had told stories of uh, looking under her couch cushions or walking around her, her block and trying to look for dimes and quarters kids might have dropped. And so she could faithfully give to the Lord. And whenever she did make some money, you better believe Miss Rosa got it right. But we need to remember at times to be content. Having food and raiment, 1 Timothy 6, 8 through 10. Be content. It says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And then many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition, for the love of money is the root of all evil, while, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, because I have gotten in trouble, boy, I've preached this in the past, let me pay a, make abundantly clear and listen. You show up to church Sunday and show me your brand new 2020 vehicle. Pick your favorite kind. And say, Pastor, look, honestly, something you should be proud of. If the Lord's provided it for you and uh, you must need it if you're planning on using it to serve the Lord and, and it's not getting away from your financial uh, requirements in your family, man, the only thing I'm going to ask is, can I drive it? <laughs> That's it. Hey, pastor, I just bought a brand new house. That's great. It's not a sin to be rich. Heaven knows we, would need, we need wealth within the church. We need, uh, as, the, as this ministry grows bigger, we're going to need people that is going to be able to provide larger amounts than the common person in the church. And when we need that, the Lord's going to provide it. It's not a sin to be rich. It is a sin to focus on the want, the desire. You turn on the TV, you see the magazines, I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had. That's where the covetousness and the sin comes into play. Hopefully you see the difference. Cause it a snare, cause it a destruction. It says having food 
and raiment, clothing, to be content. Here's the focus. Matthew 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves do break forth and steal, break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where, le- where thieves do not break forth nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Remember, and I, I won't get into the health and wealth prosperity, because it's prosperity type of preaching, because it's very dangerous here to do that. But God's promised he's not going to be a debtor to anybody. You're tithing, you're giving, you're doing it the right way. You're doing wise with your finances at home. You're not squandering it. You're going to provide. You need to see the provision. You need to watch the provision. I've taught my Sunday school kids and teenagers for years. We need to be aware of the blessing he did give. You ate last night. Well, all I had was pancakes. I had pancakes for supper last night because it's all we had. And a box of pancakes is two bucks and a uh, decent bottle of syrup is two bucks. So I had pancakes. Good, you ate. Having food. My rant, my clothes, Pastor, they're from the 80s. Are you clothed? He's pouring out blessings. But at times, I've seen it before. There's been times Christmas is my... Uh, my family, I remember a couple years in a row, Christmas is opening up a letter, one of the dear families we used to serve with out in the East Coast. Wealthy families. It's that, that wealth I was talking about. Knew we were struggling, gave us a very large Christmas gift at times. Made my wife pass out on the floor almost. I looked at her the first day and she's like, what? So I recalled the family, you made a mistake. She said, no, pastor, you need it. I'm like, yeah, we need it. But is it going to happen that way? I'm not saying a word about that. It's up to the Lord. But what it is saying here is make your focus on heavenly things. One silly comment as my wife's coming to play the piano, it's easy to be focused on the earthly things. And and hope you're not growing too old of it. Yes, my hobby as your pastor is not golf, not silly things. It's those dumb video games. And a couple weeks ago, I was playing one of them at, at, uh, after the office, playing some sort of Mario Nintendo game with my son. And I use it as family time, folks. It's fun. And uh, our dog, Lily, of course, has that big lump of cancer on her belly. And uh, Lily was in the bedroom where we were playing those video games. And the controller got caught on her cancer. And uh, before I knew it, before I could react, Everything in my mind, the way I reacted, even dumbly in my mind, all of that, those games, that system came crashing to the ground. I didn't think anything of it until the next day or two where one of my other kids said, hey, Dad, can we play that game? I said, yeah, and I turned it on. Sure enough, that system didn't break. It ended up breaking. It, it didn't work properly anymore. And it changed my attitude in a way that it's almost embarrassing to admit. In a very small way, that'd be a test on where you're at with your treasures on earth. Of losing that thing, if you don't have the nicest, if you don't have the best, messes up your life. Your treasures are on earth and not in heaven. So I encourage you through this to watch your tithing. Watch it. I'm, I'm serious. Focus on it. If you're not pri- properly tithing 10%, at least you're not right with the Lord. And if you are, maybe you can give more. Not because the pastor asked. I, I don't look at that. Because the Lord is asking you to. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this way. Thank you for this lesson. Lord, use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm.